With all those fruits and vegetables and potatoes, bananas and kale, where is your protein, Janina? Where is your protein? I will show you in a moment where my protein is, but first let me present myself. I am Janina Vlad, the founder of LeanOnCarbs.com. Carbs meaning natural carbs, yes, not refined carbs like crystallized sugar, fructose syrup or flour. I'm talking about fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes, and yes, starchy vegetables as well. Potatoes, yes, white potatoes, not only sweet potatoes. Yes, white potatoes, man. I've lost weight, over 45 pounds, eating in abundance from these foods. No calorie restrictions, no eating in deficit, no portion control, no overly exercising. And that was three years ago, and I managed to keep these results without hunger, without craving, without coffee, without overly exercising, I mainly walk. And I'm here to promote this message to you because you as well can reap the benefits of being plant-based vegan while eating in abundance. Eating in abundance meaning at least 2500 calories a day. Because you see, the problem of obesity is because we have an excess of calories. Because we eat foods that are very high in calorie density, having almost zero fiber and water, and having a high content of fat. All the animal products are high in fat and zero fiber. <laughs> yes, cheese and all the meats, processed or whole, the eggs and all the dairy and the butter, they are all high in carb, high, not high in carb, high in fat and zero fiber. So they have a, a great density of calories per bite, per pound. So they don't promote satiety, you have to eat a lot of calories to fill up the stomach because we need around two pounds of food in our stomach to feel full, to stretch all the walls uh, of the stomach. If you put this kind of foods and plant processed, processed plant foods uh, like flowery, sugary and oily, not to mention oily foods, of course you will have to put a lot of calories in these two pounds will be like over, th over 3000 calories in, uh, in a full stomach of this kind of foods. And that's why you have to restrict and moderate portions and to drink coffee to decrease your appetite when you eat this kind of foods. But when, on the other hand, you eat foods that are uh, high in fiber and water and low in fat, they have fewer calories per this volume of two pounds of food in a full stomach of, uh, of food. <laughs> so you will eat fewer calories and you remove all this excess of calories. That's why you don't need to eat in deficit. You don't need to eat less than your body needs because eating in deficit doesn't mean only deficit of calories but also deficit of nutrition, overall nutrition. Micronutrients, not all, only uh, macronutrients. So you will get deficient in many minerals and vitamins if you go below your um, normal level of energy intake. That's why I'm promoting eat, eating to reach satiety because this is a survival a signal to follow, like hunger. Hunger and satiety. Follow hunger, so eat every time you are hungry and stop only when you are full, comfortably full. And yes, you will lose weight. You will lose weight. But first you have to address your mindset. And we are in this video to address this fear of not having proteins because this hinder your success and this is the cause for many ex-vegans because uh, coming on this lifestyle with the same mindset of restriction they focus and majority of people focus on these uh, vegetables these uh, non-starchy vegetables they focus on uh, small portions because they want to have the deficit they pursue the deficit and of course by having deficit means they will get hungry. They will be sluggish and majority of people believe that proteins, especially animal proteins, give energy. So they say, I'm sluggish, I don't have energy because I don't have animal proteins. In actuality, they don't have calories. They don't have enough calories. Uh, you see, cutting down calories and eating in deficit is bad enough on this standard diet. But it's even worse when you come at this whole high carb diet, being so rich in water and fiber, if you come from this mindset of small portions, you will have these small portions, but you will have a lower density of calories per pound. So you have the same portions, but with vegetables and mashed potatoes and the brown rice, you will have less 
less calories and that's good for weight loss but it's not good when you come with a restrictive mindset because you will have fewer calories than you have ever had on your restrictive diets that's why you will go mad and crazy and depressed and you'll binge all the time and you will start of course craving animal products this is why it's not because plants lack something it's because restrictive mindset and calorie entering entering in this calorie uh, calorie deficit so these high carb plants are not 100 percent carbohydrates their calories are not coming only from carbs high carb means over 70 percent of their calories coming from carbohydrates not 100 percent so the rest is coming from fats the other two macronutrients fats and proteins so high carb plant-based diets are not zero proteins no they are actually around seven percent calories seven percent proteins from the total calories for example fruits have around five percent actually some have uh, two some have six an average four percent of their calories coming from protein from proteins vegetables have more for example are some vegetables that have around six five eight percent some have 12 like tomato tomatoes and some like broccoli and kale have 20 percent of their calories coming from proteins after that we have potatoes around five percent then greens between seven and thirteen percent some have over thirteen percent proteins and after that legumes around twenty percent coming from proteins and uh, soybean being at the level of over 36 percent of its calorie coming from proteins so plants have proteins and not only that but plants are the primary source of proteins on this earth what is a protein a protein is a molecule of mainly four elements oxygen hydrogen carbon until now they look like carbohydrates <laughs> plus nitrogen and they take all of these from the air and in the soil and nitrogen with the help of the bacteria that live surrounding the roots of the plant so plants create in their leaves with the add of the light of the sun creates all the amino acids needed for their functions for their health for their structure <laughs> and secondly yes nature made them uh, to provide fuel for animal kingdom and we the plants we have all the essential amino acids from all the, the parts of the plant from the root to the seed and the fruit they have all the essential amino acids you will see at the end of the, the video I will go to the computer and we'll make uh, we will put into chronometer what I normally eat and you will see you will see uh, green or white uh, my protein intake so plants are the primary source of protein on the on the earth not only that but are the leanest protein man because everybody is after lean proteins what's more leaner than plants that have a less majority less than eight percent fat what's leaner than that we don't need more fat than that we are not infants right now infants yes they need more proteins not more proteins they need more fats infants need around 30 35 percent from fat we are good to go with less than 10 percent we're good to go and if you worry about fats i will make another video and increase with nuts and seeds and stay stay plant-based of course but other video about fats going back to proteins so i was telling that this is the leanest protein available <laughs> you want you want do you want lean proteins yes plant proteins are the leanest okay how much protein do we need do we need actually a lot like one gram of proteins per every kilo of body weight i don't know i don't believe so but it happens <laughs> to me to have over one gram of proteins in my diet you will see a bit later in chronometer uh, coming from proteins because i weigh around 55 kilos and when i eat more lentils i have even 90 grams of protein in that day but uh, majority of my days i'm around 60 grams so i have over one gram of protein for every kilo of my body weight however research after research showed that we don't need that much we actually need around 0.5 to 0.6 proteins not proteins grams of proteins per every kilo of body weight that will mean for me around 30 35 grams of proteins but 
I never eat only 35. I never eat that level. So yes, for people that are fruitarians, if they eat enough calories, so staying above 35, um, not 35, 25 daily calories, they can have enough protein. They can have 40 grams of protein. Eating raw, eating mostly fruits and some vegetables, yes. I'm not here to promote that uh, lifestyle. I found it a little bit um, not complicated, but it's not that appealing. I don't know. I was and I have days when I eat the majority of my day only fruits and some vegetables. So all that day is raw. But why to go there? I, I, I believe people go there believing that cooked foods and cooked uh, starches are unhealthy. That's why. Not because they have uh, uh, this orchard and they have plenty of fruits. And of course, if I have all this free, free food and not free because I have to work for this orchard, for these uh, fruit trees. But uh, you know what I mean? I don't have to pay. So I have uh, food for free in my garden. Of course, I will eat uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner fruits. But the majority of people that I've seen online that um, are on uh, this uh, fruitarian diets, they are doing believing that cooked starches are damaging our health. I don't believe that, obviously. I promote that. I love cooked starches. So I have majority of my dinners and some lunches I have cooked, cooked starches with veggies, raw veggies, salad or steamed veggies aside. Okay, but I was saying, even if you go there, you will have over 30 grams, over 40 grams of proteins from your uh, raw high fruit diet. So that is a known issue. Is a known issue, and in the next video, we will talk about uh, proteins being here to provide us energy because many people believe this. Many people believe that uh, that's one of the purpose of proteins in our uh, body to give us energy. And uh, when they feel sluggish, when they go ex vegan, believe that they didn't have energy because they didn't have enough uh, proteins. But I will address that in a separate video. I have a nice analogy, so stay tuned for that. Okay, another thing to consider is infancy and breast milk. You see, when you were a baby, when I was a baby, babies grow very fast in a very, very short amount of time. Very short amount of time, yes. So, is the fastest growing stage of our life. We never grow that fast in our lifespan again. So, in a few months, we double our weight while being baby. And what's the sole source of nutrition? for that stage in our lives? Yes, breast milk. And of course, our species breast milk, human breast milk. Okay, the next question. Do you know, <laughs> do you know the percentage of protein in this ideal nutrition for that stage when, you, when we grow the fastest? Do you know the percentage of proteins? Man, do you know it? Uh, can you guess it? Right, right, write down in the comments. Can you guess what's that percentage? I'm waiting. It's six percent. So only six percent of the calories in the breast milk, human breast milk, comes from protein. So with six percent proteins from our daily energy intake, when we grow that fast, when we are babies, come from proteins. So with six percent proteins, and we can grow that fast. We can grow our tissues, our bones our skin, our head, our muscle, because baby develop muscle in the first months, all the organs, all the cells and the tissues are supported with this level of 6% and there are species that have a higher percentage, higher content of proteins in their uh, mother breast milk like cows. It's around 18%. So different species because a baby cow uh, grow faster than us in that stage of infancy and they become adult of I, how, how many tons a, a cow has, does have a, a cow has two tons one ton however they grow faster than us so they need more proteins they need also more fat because that uh, that has more fat as well but going back to proteins we don't need to grow that fast so our babies don't need cow's milk mother human human mother <laughs> milk breast milk so we are around six percent and you are worried that our um, lifestyle this high carb low fat and low protein uh, plant-based vegan diet this diet that i'm promoting over here 
uh, does it have enough protein? And we have above 6%, we have 7. I have most of my days 8% coming from protein. 8% uh, from all the calories I have that day coming from proteins. And you can have 10%, of course. But if you are, of course, uh, concerned about growing muscle and you believe that you need to have more and uh, the science didn't prove it. Science said, no, you can stay at that level, but of course, eat more. Eat more and what grows muscle is exercise and providing you have enough fuel, eat enough calories. Because when you eat enough calories, calories of course, you eat enough proteins. It's coming with, with the pack, with all the pack. And these plants come with all the package of nutrition, like I said. They, they are not coming only with sugar. Comes with thousands of molecules plus proteins plus, fat, plus fatty acids. And of course, when you weight lift, when you have these workouts, strength workouts, you eat more than I eat. I eat around 2,500 calories. Sometimes more, sometimes less. You will have more appetite. And because you are a bigger person than me, uh, because you are a guy, of course, you will eat more calories. And your 7% of proteins will look different. You will have more grams of proteins. And if you eat, let's say, 4,000 calories, 7% means almost. Oh, how much? 7% for almost 300 calories coming from proteins divided by 4 means over 70 grams. So you are not at my level. You are at other level of protein intake. And of course, increase the percentage at 8%, at 9 at 10. 10% 10 of proteins from those 4,000 calories means 400 calories coming from proteins divided by 4 by 4 calories every gram of proteins, meaning 100 grams of proteins. So you don't need to worry. And you can go above that level of 10%, but it's not recommendable. Protein is it, good. It has a purpose in our life, but not too much though it can can create these imbalances okay and lastly before going to the simulation of what i eat to see uh, the numbers in chronometer lastly these plant proteins that are the primal source of protein in in this uh, in the life of, on earth and these are the leanest protein available these are coming with nutrition with right nutrition for our species One moment. With fiber, phytonutrients, amino acids, and a myriad of other plant compounds that are looking in animal proteins. Don't you see? That's why I promote longevity and health and reverse diseases. And not only that, but these plant proteins, they are devoid of harmful saturated fats and cholesterol. Yes, plants have some saturated fats, but the percentage is so small. There are some plants higher in fat, and I'm not promoting uh, high fat uh, foods, that have more saturated fats, like peanuts, peanut butter, uh, coconut, palm oil, uh, chocolate and cocoa butter. This kind of uh, high fat plants, uh, plant foods, have, yes, a higher amount of saturated fats, but uh, we don't need those in our diet. And of course, plants don't have cholesterol. This is a fat created only by animals. And not only that, but it's a fat created only by herbivore animals. <laughs> so we create our own cholesterol. Did you know? Uh, wolves and lions and cats and tigers don't create cholesterol. They have enough cholesterol from their diets. So it's sunny and cloudy and sunny and cloudy that is why we don't need to bring cholesterol from outside because we have this inbuilt uh, production of cholesterol we don't have mechanism to detoxify the excess cholesterol that's why we get ill and uh, our cardiovascular system pay the bill for our our preference to eat animal products that bring cholesterol so that was with plant protein that are this perfect perfect uh, uh, pack in the plants that these plants come with a lot of carbohydrates 
and in a future video we'll uh, address these carbohydrates and how are they created and why they are such a, an amazing and primal and optimal source of fuel of energy in our human cells because i have that video like i said with the other micronutrient fat and i will create this one with carbohydrates going back to proteins now we go uh, to my computer we'll make the simulation and we will chat a bit about those numbers i have over here all the foods that i had for breakfast lunch and dinner i will uh, break them down for you so i had these oranges it was actually more than uh, one kilogram of pole so of course <laughs> after peeling the oranges uh, but i left it like that uh, with some bananas and some kale from over here uh, for my lunch, I had two bananas with kiwi and kale and tomatoes. <laughs> I know, but tomatoes with bananas and kale and kiwi. <laughs> ah, it's a nice combination. I love them so much. And for dinner, I had some more potatoes. <laughs> Not potatoes, tomato. With potato, boiled uh, without skin, but chopped like for salad. Uh, with red bell pepper. That's great and oh, so sweet and I love it so much. And lentils. As you can see, I have over here a 200 grams of boiled lentils, as you can see. So it's not 100 gram of dry lentils uh, that transformed in almost um, 400 grams of dry, of wet, sorry, wet legumes. So in these 200 grams of um, boiled lentils, only water, no added salt, they are 232 calories. So. I had overall 2450 calories in these days and broken down into the macros. Uh, the majority of the calories, of course, come from carbs, carbohydrates, 88%, and protein, it's 8%. So 200 calories from this total come from protein. So I have 8% protein. Uh, and do you remember uh, how much I said, uh, baby? The human being that grows the fastest and it only and eats only breast milk. Uh, what's the percentage of his diet for protein? Yeah, it's less than six percent. So I have over the top uh, covering my needs for protein, and I'm not growing. Hopefully, I'm not growing uh, as a baby. I don't want to grow. I don't want to grow. And if you want to grow some muscles, some biceps and quadriceps and some uh, glutes. Oh my god you don't have to eat like a doubling <laughs> doubling your your body weight okay and fats 100 calories come from fats it's four percent fats let's see am i deficient in polyunsaturated fats am i deficient in uh, omegas because we will go down this app while having is problems and is limitations like this over here don't ever pay attention to the BMR calculators. They will put you in deficit, man. And if you want to break free from this diet culture and lose weight without hunger and keep it off for your whole life, just eat to reach satiety from fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. So pay attention to your satiety, focusing on carbohydrates, not on these numbers. BMR are only to put you in deficit. Don't, don't, don't be fooled anymore, please. So of course, it has this limitation and others, but overall, it's a good app. So we have over here, not only the macros broken down, but also the micronutrients. And over here, we'll have another limitation, not having antioxidants. They don't have a, a box for them. They don't have in the box for minerals. They don't have iodine, um, chlorine. So it's not perfect, but still very good. If you want to go uh, vegan and to stay vegan, and if you want to do it correctly and eat enough, eat enough carbohydrates. Okay, so in those, uh, how much food as a quantity? Uh, so until now, almost two kilos, six, three kilos. Okay, around four kilos of food. That means how much in pounds? Okay, is nine? Okay, nine pounds of food. As you can see, the majority of that weight is water. And that's good, man. It's the best water you need. In these times, in this society, 
when we are so dehydrated, when we suffer a lot of symptoms, a lot of uh, health issues for not having enough water and people, people avoiding just a moment. Uh, people avoiding to drink up water because they don't feel like drinking water. Okay, eating fresh uh, fruits and vegetables, you will have that water. Plus, having your wet starches because they have water, like grains and legumes, they soak, uh, absorb water. And after that, release it slowly in your body, so hydrating you and keeping you full, adding to this bulk, fiber and water, that's perfection. If your goal is to lose weight and get healthy, yeah, get on board of having a quantity of foods like I had here. Like you see, I have 24, uh, so less than 2,500 calories a day. But no, I had a little bit more, I will tell you in a moment. And uh, nine pounds of food, that means a lot of satiety. That's why, and a lot of carbs that give me energy and keep me away from craving. Uh, craving junk food, craving uh, sugar, table sugar, things with uh, this, obesogenic you know, ingredients, isolated ingredients, table sugar, uh, fructose syrup, uh, crystallized fructose, corn syrup, and isolated fats in the form of oil and animal fats, lard and uh, ghee, butter, cheese, and so many more. Which is that we don't need actually enough body and make us sick, man, not only obese. So, of course, you want to have your good, good carbs, good sugars. Over here, look, as you can see, I have a lot of good sugars, fructose, glucose, sucrose. I have my starches. So, I have a total of, without fibers, because fiber, yes, it's a type of carb, but being um, indigestible for us, it's broken down, it's a part. We don't take on board the calories coming from fiber, that's good. Uh, but the bacteria that lives in our um, digestive system, yes, that bacteria that help us be healthy, that thrive on the fiber. So having your fiber, and look how much fiber do I have. This is the number you want to aim for if your goal is to lose weight and get healthy. But like I said in my video with transition foods, don't go, don't go for this number if you're coming from the standard diet, uh, which is deficient in fiber meaning your um, microbiota <laughs> is unbalanced. So it's not ready to um, break down these fibers. But going back to the sugars that keep me energized and away away from those junk sugary um, sugary foods people normally crave on, crave for, I have, as you can see, starches and simple sugars, almost 500 calories, 500 grams, which means let's see how many grams per kilo body weight let's uh, use calculator so we have 470 divided by 55 kilos my current body weight it's all 8.5 grams of carbohydrates of sugars uh, per every kilo of my body weight so i'm good that's why I don't crave, guys. You you should aim for the same numbers. Uh, of course, if you are an athlete and you exercise uh, more than I do, I only walk and some push-ups and uh, squats. You need ten and over ten grams as an athlete. Ten over ten grams of these sugars, starches and uh, simple sugars, per every kilo of your body weight. Okay, let's move on um, to fats. Okay, so I have. Just enough fats. You will uh, say probably that it's not enough. 12 grams of fat is not enough. Um, if you worry for your fats, of course, add uh, nuts, uh, but add some avocado. But we will uh, touch on that in a moment. Right now, I want you to see this <laughs> omega 3 chart for here. It's a lot, man. It's enough. And let's say that I am not um, able to absorb all this quantity, that is 1.5 grams of omega-3, because having these rich and fiber foods, and as uh, I don't, uh, of course, blend them, I need to chew my food, and nobody chew its food, their food, perfectly. Uh, so, yes, we don't actually get on board every single of these calories, and that's good when you have a high-carb diet and high-fiber diet, high whole, whole foods. Uh, that are rich in fiber, and fiber, like I said, it's a carb, 
you, of course, won't absorb all the minerals over here. But as you can see, you have more, much more than 100% of the daily dose of those vitamins and nutrition overall. So let's say you don't take everything in because some of this nutrition uh, is eliminated with our stool, so is not absorbed through the walls of the, our uh, digestive tract. So we <laughs> basically poop it in the toilet. But still, that's not much. It's in between, depends how you chew, of course, in between 5 to 20% from those nutrients and, of course, calories that are you're flushing away. So you, you don't absorb them. It's still, <laughs> it's still left enough for us. Because let's say 20% uh, uh, goes with the fibers away, not in your body. It's 20% from this. It's still over 100% of your daily dose of omega-3. And omega-6, you have just enough. It's, you have almost double the omega-3. So the ratio is perfect. You don't need much omega-6. And if you want more, I will show you in a moment how you can add more on plants. <laughs> you don't need to, and on whole plants, you don't need to eat animal products. You don't need to add oil. Of course not. Okay, and saturated fats you have. You have saturated fats as well. Okay, now protein, because we are here for proteins. <laughs> this is the video for proteins. And do you see it, guys? How much protein and all essential amino acids, including methionine, methionine and lysine. And look, it's not uh, on the edge. So come on, guys. Please, 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 please. Never, never, ever fear you lack protein on plants. It's not that big of an issue. It's not an issue. Like I said, plants have protein and have the best protein for us with the right package. We will uh, get to that in a moment. The people that have an excess of protein, and it's very easy to have excess of protein, especially when uh, your diet is focused on animal products. These people get sick, imbalances and deficiencies of minerals. And it's a, a mineral that people are so afraid of losing it. Uh, that is a loss from our bodies when we have too much protein. Not to mention that you can get cancer, increase uh, your uh, cholesterol, production, cholesterol production on top of eating exogenous cholesterol. So increase your risk for stroke and heart disease. So please just understand that having more protein than you need is not your in your best interest. Okay, um, as we expect, of course, the majority of these uh, proteins are coming from those those lentils, of course, because lentils have uh, around 18 to 20 percent of their calories coming from proteins. But on the second place, can't you see? Is bananas, man? Bananas have protein and oranges, so. Uh, second place and uh, third place on the podium, yeah, are fruits. Yes, fruits have all essential amino acids. And potatoes and kale, like you see, kale, having only those 200 grams of kale, and you have almost 6 grams of protein. And kiwi and tomato and red pepper. As you can see, uh, tomato, so in half a, half a kilo, one pound of, of tomatoes, and you have over four grams of proteins. So uh, now you see it uh, red. It means I have too much. So people say you need one um, one gram of protein per every kilo of body weight, but that's uh, it's not true. We don't need that much. And let's say we need that much. <laughs> I have fifty five kilos, so I have more than my body need needs. Okay. Now you're convinced with this uh, whole issue about protein? I am sure if you are on um, carnivore or keto and you believe in your uh, ideas, I'm sure you will uh, have some comments and please share uh, them in a polite and kind way. We start the conversation, of course, I'm here to uh, respond to your doubts and your, your opinions, of course. Every one of us has opinions, but uh, this is not my opinion. This is a fact. Okay, now let's go to vitamins because people uh, believe that I don't know that plants don't have uh, vitamins, <laughs> and this is highly ironic, ironic because they are so rich in vitamins, and the vitamins, these vitamins are not coming with saturated fats like you, you've seen. It's just enough. See, don't they don't come with uh, 
cholesterol, of course, because plants don't produce cholesterol. We, uh, herbivore animals, only herbivore animals produce cholesterol in their body. And we produce cholesterol. I produce my cholesterol. I will share in um, two videos from now my blood test. You will see how much cholesterol I have. Okay, let's go to B vitamins. All are here. And the majority are here because of the banana. You will see. Banana, potatoes, and oranges. B2. The majority comes from banana, kale, and oranges. <laughs> B3. Bananas in the second place after potato. B5. Bananas in the first place. So bananas have a lot of B, B vitamins. And we need B vitamins for a lot of functions in our bodies. And bananas are not only good for giving you that energy and giving you those sugars, as you can see, to stay away from uh, ice cream and pies, cakes, cookies, and donuts. Yes, bananas have B vitamins. Uh, B12, I took my, uh, my supplements today. I don't add it. I don't need to add it. Okay, uh, B9, folates. Of course, all these plants have a lot of B9. And the majority of our population is deficient in B9. And they uh, supplement, especially pregnant women, that uh, they lack B9 uh, because it's in very much need when the baby is growing in the uterus, inside of the mother. Uh, actually, I have a nice story <laughs> about having that much folates in my diet with my doctor when I went. For my dissolves, but this in the video about the blood test, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe, share your comments, and wait for that. Okay, vitamin A. They say we don't have a, a vitamin A in plants, so we need to eat animal products. This actually is a nice story, it's a funny story <laughs> because when I went vegan in 2011, of course, I, I was a vegan, next vegan, plant based, and it's black. Day plant based because I did a lot of mistakes uh, in the first years and uh, I was blogging that time a lot and sharing my new found diet and people of course uh, fearing, uh, fearing not having vitamin A and that was uh, one of the most uh, um, most concerned of people not protein <laughs> vitamin A vitamin A and uh, it's, it's no it's not a problem this is actually just another uh, another myth that we convert just a little bit. Yes, we convert just a little bit of it, but we have enough. And in this day, particular day, I didn't have sweet potatoes, I didn't have papaya, I didn't have other foods that have more vitamin A uh, than the ones I had. For example, over here, you see that the majority of this vitamin A comes from those 200 grams of kale. And uh, a lot from 200 grams of red bell pepper. And potatoes, tom not potatoes, sorry, tomato. I always, I always uh, say uh, to tomato, potato. It's, to me, it's almost the same, <laughs> the same word. Okay. And yeah, no need to worry about. Actually, we don't have mechanism to detoxify the excess of vitamin A. We don't need an excess. We don't need to take it from other species that created this retinol in their body. We have the precursors, these car carotenoids. And it's enough. It's our favorite, our optimal source of vitamin A um, predecessors, precursors. What's the name for that? Okay, vitamin C. Oh my God, do you see how much vitamin C I have? 20 times, 20 times, guys, of daily recommended uh, dose. So I have 2,000% of it. And the same situation with vitamin K. Oh my God, so fear no more, people. Fear no more of plants, please. In a society where um, multivitamins are sold like toilet paper, it's just the most sold uh, pill in the world, this multivitamin supplements, because people don't have vitamin C, people are deficient in vitamin C and potassium and magnesium, but we will get to the minor minerals in, in a second. And yes, they fear, they fear uh, fruits, they fear fruits, because fruits make you fat. Yeah, look I'm, how fat I am. After all those fruits. Uh, so yes, take your vitamins, guys, from the plants. From uh, fresh vegetables, from fresh fruits. Cooked starchy vegetables, cooked grains and cooked legumes. Vitamin E. Vitamin E. Oh my God, people say, on this high-carb plant-based diet, without having nuts and seeds and avocados, without having 
uh, almonds. Where do you get your vitamin E from? From my fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes? Come on, it's a non-issue. Please find out uh, what are your favorite fruits from this and uh, make your research. And some fruits and some vegetables have more vitamin E than others. Please, please measure your food for the first weeks and use this app to track your vitamin E as well, not only the other uh, micronutrients and not only the macros, to see how much, how much uh, vitamin E is in your foods. And after that, oh, include more. What, what have you had for here, over here? Okay. Kiwi, kiwi. So in a pound of kiwi, we have that much, almost half of the daily dose. And in those 200, only 200 grams of red bell pepper, that means a medium. Guys, it's not even a big one. It's a medium red bell pepper and have two red bell peppers for more vitamin E. Because you can easily eat red bell pepper. It's so tasty, so sweet and crunchy. Oh my God, juicy. So no issue over vitamin E either. <laughs> and tomatoes and oranges and kale and bananas. Okay, as you can see, the most vitamin E in, uh, from the foods I've eaten in this day come from fruits. From fruits, because the red bell pepper is still... <laughs> well, actually, it's a fruit, tomato as well, but there uh, are more savory foods. Oh my God, I'm talking like... Uh, isn't, isn't it? Uh, is, aren't I? Aren't I? Aren't I? What's the correct form for this? Okay. Now, I hope you are relaxed. We have vitamin E. I had vitamin E. I'm good to go. Vitamin K, K like I said, it's with 200 grams because vitamin K is uh, a lot in a lot of fruits and vegetables, but in those dark leafy vegetables like kale, like uh, spinach and uh, sweet chards. So, yes, eat your kale, man. And you don't need much, just a bunch of kale, two bunch of kales. It's easy, it's crunchy, it's tasty, and will give you also sodium and that uh, salty taste. It's very nice combination with sweet fruits like banana. Yes, because sometimes people, um, not uh, they get uh, a bit. Um, how do you call it when it's too sweet for you? What's the name of that? However, with more textures, because you eat the uh, kale that is crunchy, with more uh, different tastes. Yes, you can eat your bananas. And if you add some tomatoes as well. Oh my God. Yeah, because that is um, has that savory, soury taste. It's sweet, tasty. Oh my God, I love tomatoes with bananas and kale. And the final trip for today's video, it's minerals. So, <laughs> guys, calcium. Do you see how much calcium I have? Let's see where this come from. Come from. Yes, almost, not almost, <laughs> over half a gram comes from those 200 grams of kale. Come on, and people say, where do you get your calcium if you don't drink uh, cow's milk? Uh, my question to you is, how do you think that cow, cow uh, got the calcium, man? Because no animal in the world produce calcium. Calcium is in soil from the rocks, from, yes, these bones of our earth so plants take that calcium and the other minerals as well uh, from the soil uh, and we have it when we eat those uh, those plants so over here i have a lot of calcium as you can see over the daily recommended zone zone dose um and this is other issue with chronometer is that um they recommended those for an adult that is not breastfeeding, because now I'm not breastfeeding anymore, that is not pregnant, I'm not pregnant anymore, uh, it's one gram. And it's an exaggeration. You don't need one gram, but you can have it. As you can see, you can have it. And if you want more, eat more kale, eat more broccoli. Um, so you don't have, you don't need one gram. Uh, there are studies with populations that um, don't have a high animal product intake. They don't eat. Basically, they don't eat animal products. Populations in um, Africa, uh, populations that uh, have their diet based on <laughs> what carbs, man. Yes, potatoes and bananas, and they have around 400, 500 grams. And even for breastfeeding mothers, even for pregnant women that had that that have that intake of uh, calcium, and the calculation was the same, like in this calculator. So. 
yes, having those fibers that uh, keep, keep trapped some of the minerals and uh, we don't absorb all this calcium that you see over here. So uh, I emphasize that even though they didn't have problems in the course of their life with uh, losing uh, bone mass, so they don't have osteoporosis in those societies, but we have a lot of um, bone fractures in our society, in our uh, pool and filled with uh, animal protein, because this is the main cause of calcium loss. And uh, one of the other main causes is, yes, sodium, man, sodium. Having a diet high in sodium, that makes our body to dissolve our bones for calcium to increase uh, the um, pH of our uh, of our blood so dissolve uh, some calcium because it's a uh, high pH uh, from our bones and after that we eliminate with our pee a lot of our bones because we love so much our proteins because we are so obsessed with uh, this animal protein and with these foods and with adding so much sodium not to mention that uh, they inject in the meat the flesh why they inject sodium because sodium uh, keeps trap water sodium uh, yes uh, it's uh, hygroscopic, so to increase, it, it, yeah, it's not a, a, a fair practice, but yes, they do it anyway, uh, to increase the weight of that flesh and the taste, they inject um, salinated salty water in the flesh you buy, in the flesh you eat. So um, that's a big part of your uh, high intake of sodium, daily high intake. Not only the processed food, that all the processed food have added sodium. Not only you cook and you add sodium because uh, your taste buds, yes, you need to reset your taste buds. Actually, I did a video about my water fast and my experience exactly for that, to reset taste buds. I didn't need to reset my taste buds, but I needed to make this experiment, this, to have this experience, uh, to promote to you. Yes, if you uh, right now have a diet that is high in uh, fats and sodium and table sugar, of course, you won't feel these foods that I'm eating and I'm enjoying so much because they are tasty. Because they have a subtle taste, more subtle than this very intense and rich uh, artificial taste, basically. And uh, to enjoy from the day one uh, this diet, to take this, uh, to feel this, that very pleasure on your tongue, yes, you need to reset your taste buds. Okay, why well, have the iron? Um, I will make more videos like this. Uh, let me know if you if you want to break down more my uh, what I eat in a day and of course to have actual footage of, with all those foods uh, to picture them more and better uh, and we will analyze more uh, this part of the minerals because right now I see this video is already too long but as you can see I have the iron you don't need too much iron we just need a little bit we don't need much men and guys and girls yes fear no more about not having iron and if you if you fear uh, please. As you can see, from those 200 calories of lentils, I have a lot of iron. Eat more lentils. And from kale, look at the kale. And bananas and kiwi. So, yes, you can increase your daily intake of iron if that, if that concerns you. And you don't need to go to processed, processed um, plant foods for your iron. Come on. Iron is found in this whole high-carb carb foods that I'm promoting. And magnesium. And people are deficient in magnesium. Over here, I have over... Um, Two times more than uh, my daily needs, and phosphorus, mag magnesium, manganese, sorry, and potassium. It's not in red. It's not in red. Doesn't mean that uh, if folates are in red, it's a problem with my health. It's not. There is not <laughs> such a thing like uh, an excess of folate and um, giving you bad uh, outcomes in your body. If the folates come in a whole package, so of course. You can have problems with an excess of B9 if that comes with your multivitamins. So over here we have potassium and it's okay, man. It's just we need to have potassium. Potassium is an electrolyte and sodium as well and chloride as well and others. But uh, you just don't need a lot of sodium. We actually need around 50 milligrams of sodium a day. And I had this, and not only this, because I will tell you in a moment, this is not complete what I do today. We will add a little bit uh, of the others. And we'll increase the sodium. And if you want to increase it even more, uh, look at the uh, zinc. And selenium is not complete, and we will get to that in a moment. Because like I said, I have a secret over here, and my selenium we will go green in a moment. Um, 
but regarding sodium if you want to add more sodium just eat Swiss 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 chard <laughs> chards because they are very salty and also sorry let's say just a small bunch of it and that increased to 400 milligrams more than double do you see it and add celery if you want more sodium natural sodium without adding salt of course you can add a little bit of salt and i recommend in the transition so i was for um what do you call it celery it's with double e celery celery roll but um i wanted the greens let's go with the stock let's put 100 grams again okay but it's not it's only 80 milligrams i have the impression it's more however focus and you do your search and find out other plants if that's your of your concern uh have algae seaweed because this is what i let's take out celery and swiss chard because i i didn't have them today and then what i made dried right where is it dry come on walk on it I don't find it see with dried okay dried and I have around five grams but it's another problem with with the uh, Actually, this took it right. Okay, so in five grams of wakame, do you see? It's almost 300 milligrams. So almost one third of gram of sodium. So if your concern is having uh, not having enough electrolytes, but you will see my blood test because in the past few months, I don't add a table salt. Uh, so no pink salt, no sea salt uh, on my dishes, on my cooked starches and veggies. And I have time to time uh, seaweed. And you will see in my blood test if I have problem and I'm deficient in sodium. So, do you see it? And with those uh, seaweed, you will have iodine as well. So, of course, not only iodine and iron and other um, other minerals. I love seaweed, don't you? And now let's go to selenium. Selenium, selenium. Because when you eat oats, I didn't have oats. Let's put oats of course when you i have oats i have less uh, of the other fruits okay oats dry 100 grams they will uh soak water and it will become with uh, uh oats and with water sorry and plant milk over one pound of food that will give you satiety and look at my selenium it's almost complete and of course you will take out some bananas or some uh, um, kiwi and oranges but sometimes I have 2800 20, uh, calories uh, a day, so it is not uh, a problem. And of course, when you are overweight, you will eat over this number, over 3000 calories. So it's not a problem having those fruits and the oats. But for more selenium, I eat Brazil nut. Brazil, unsalted. And to increase uh, the digestibility, I soaked it in water. Sometimes I even uh, grind it. So it's around. Four grams, sometimes three. Let's put three because it is a normal, small, not small. It's regular. Let's see selenium. Do you see it, guys? So one Brazil nut. That is, it's three grams of Brazil nut, and you have one hundred and five percent of the daily dose of selenium. So you don't need to eat fish and seafood. Please leave the fish alone in the sea to live their lives, to enjoy their lives. Don't put harm on animals because you don't have selenium. Just do your research. The more you learn, the more, the less you fear, and the less animal products you consume, and the less less harm you inflict in others. Not to mention all the PCBs and the plastics and the mercury and other pollutants that are in the ocean. And uh, fish, and the, the bigger is the fish, the more bioaccumulates in its fat and in its uh, tissue, uh, omegas, and uh, of course selenium. But also because uh, they don't produce selenium by themselves. <laughs> it's from algae, and the small fish eat the algae and have a little bit of selenium. And after that, uh, bigger fish eat that uh, small fish and bioaccumulates not only uh, omega-3 and selenium, but also all 
the pollens that are in that ocean and they are uh, stocked in our fats, in their fats as well. So in adipose tissue, the fat cells, because majority are um, fat soluble of these uh, pollutants. So please, please stay with minerals found in plants. Eat directly the plants. Uh, skip the middlemen, which are animals. Skip the middlemen. Okay. And if you need more omega-3, and if you need more omega-6, look over here, increased with the consumption of uh, oats, as you can see, increased the omega-3. And omega-6, do you see it? With increase, uh, with added oats in your, so have an oatmeal with 100 grams of uh, dry oats, soaked in water, boiled water, add some plant milk and fruits, some bananas, uh, some berries, and flax seeds, we get to that in a moment. And look, increase is your omega-6, is that concern you? And you can have it on green as well, but it's not recommended. Have walnuts, for example, have uh, hemp seeds, and you will get there if you want green in um, omega-6. Let's add, let's take out oats, because I didn't have actual oats. I had the Brazil nut, I had the wakame, and I had 10 grams of grounded flax, flax seeds, Okay, and to increase their digestibility, digestibility, yes, uh, so 10 grams, soak them in water overnight, uh, after, of course, they are already grinded, they are uh, dust, <laughs> not that dust, and uh, soak them in water, just a moment, oh my god, 44 minutes, soak them in water, and you increase your chances to have more omega-3, omega Look over here, how much omega-3 we have for those flax seeds. 10 grams, so only 50 calories. So overall fats with flax seeds, we have in those 10 grams, we have not even 5 grams of fats, but it's enough to have polyunsaturated fats. And we have a little bit more saturated as well. So overall, we have almost 20 grams of fats, but we have more. If you eat, uh, like I said, a little bit of walnuts, in another video, we will go more in detail with fats because uh, this video was for protein and we whew, we managed to make it long and to speak about uh, almost everything over here. So, guys, do you see it? And even in the situation when uh, we don't convert this omega-3 in EPA and DHA, uh, all them, so all these almost 4 grams of omega-3, it's still enough. It's still enough. I had my both pregnancies. Uh, on this diet, my kids are uh, are healthy. We never go to hospital, guys. This is story for other video. Um, yeah, they're pa pediatric, 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 pediatric uh, doctors. Uh, don't know them. Don't know them. They know. We know. We don't ever go to hospital. Not because we fear hospital. Because we don't need it. They get uh, have a cold or two a year. That's it. That's it, guys. They're healthy. Uh, my oldest son is 12 years old, my daughter is 7 years old, so in both of my pregnancy I had of more food, I was eating more than 2500 calories of course, and my second pregnancy even more because I was overweight, I was almost 80 kilos, so come on, not almost, I think I uh, I went over 80 kilos, I, I was so afraid to weight myself in that time, yeah, uh, so let's wrap it up guys, it's enough, of all the macros you need it's enough of all the micronutrients we need and we don't have here the micronutrients that are not listed on uh, this app like flavonoids all the other phytosterols and um, antioxidants because we have antioxidants not only these vitamins that are antioxidants vitamin a c uh, and d and i didn't mention about vitamin d i will make another video Actually, this comes from sun, and we create our own vitamin D. We don't have to eat animals for that, or take a supplement. But in another video about that. Uh, so yes, yes, I will. I will finish with this video. Please give it a like because it was not like I just empowered you to have more confidence in this diet, and of course to reap the benefits of it because we are here in this life to live our best lives, and our best life are not in an overweight body. I'm sorry, just don't glorify obesity. No, this is not our best self. We are not. We don't perform our best. We are not the best parent when we are, when we are uh, overweight. We are no. Don't have energy to play with our kids and uh, to be patient. To have patience to to deal with uh, parenting in general. And uh, not to mention, we cannot perform our best in our jobs when we are not healthy. So this is the best diet for our species. 
uh, you reverse your uh, chronic conditions and you will delete that without eating under uh, 2,000 calories, without going in deficit. You will lean down and you will be able to keep it off because this will be the time you will lean down without starving, without hungry, hunger, without cravings, without binging. So subscribe for more videos like this. As you can see, I post every day. I, uh, yeah, I have energy. Look, I have energy to be productive, man. What other proof do you need? I have so much energy to wake up at four and to be productive, to work so many hours, to be a um, homeschooler mother, uh, to clean the house, to cook for them. Uh, yeah, yeah, proof. The proof is in the, in the plants, in the high carb plants, man. So subscribe for more. And until the next, take better care of your body.